So where China has gone is to leave the rest of the world behind. The rate of urbanization, 20 million people a year. But China is urbanizing in a very, very complicated world and doing it very, very well. Uh, more than 50% of construction activity in the world is in China today. So obviously the, the opportunity to create great architecture is more in China than anywhere else in the world. Now then we look at the other 50% of construction activity that the world is undertaking, what opportunities do they really have? Well, very few and far between. But more importantly, the urban fabric that's been created, the live-work dynamic, the streets in the sky, the parks in the air, the subterranean connections, the ease of life, the, the uh, integration of subway systems with roads, with pedestrian systems, never been done before because the West developed its cities sequentially from the horse and cart to the first motor car to the first train. But China has new cities and can invent new ways of planning cities, more convenient ways, better ways, more sustainable ways, more connected ways. And one of the first things I noticed when I started work in the 90s in China was that Chinese cities have a great balance between park, recreation, and built form. And the citizens have a very good balance between live and work. The, that balance struck me, well, this can be done. It is possible. So as densities kept increasing, I kept focusing upon what is needed for people to recreate. And what they need is public space. So it was a simple equation. What I said was, well, if a 20-storey building needs a pavement for people, then a 40-storey building must need two pavements, and an 80-storey building needs four pavements. So we need to create pavements in the air, and walkways in the sky, and parks in the sky. If there's not enough land, and we want to use our land compactly, we want to use our city land in a compact way, then we must create more built recreational space. And that led me to then considering building form, that we always see our buildings as towers with walls like fortresses. But in fact, the bottom of those buildings can be perforated, can allow people through. And the bottom of those buildings can spread out, so create retail, shopping, community facilities on many levels the public can percolate through. China's decided very sensibly to stop or to control the use of agricultural land and to revisit its cities, its brownfield sites, and make them really, really efficient. And I think that's great. That's the right way to go. It's going to be sustainable, connected, infrastructurally intelligent. It's absolutely the right way to go.